In lecture five, we're going to be talking about angles and how we measure those angles. And we're going to start by talking about the measurement called degrees. And in this, uh, uh, this section, we're going to want to be able to convert between um, decimal form of our degree measurements and degrees, minutes, and seconds for angles. So once we understand what we mean by an angled measure, we're then going to describe how we um, convert between different forms of those measurements. So to begin with, let's talk about what is an angle. So first of all, a ray or a half line is that portion of a line that starts at a point V and then extends indefinitely in one direction. So if this is a point V, a line that goes off from that point is a ray or a half line. Now if we take two rays that share a common point, that is they are drawn from a common vertex, all right, we're going to let one ray be the initial side and one ray be the terminal side. I mean, we're starting in one place and moving to the other. Okay, these two rays form, sorry, typo there, an angle. So you have this picture drawn right here that illustrates that. You've got a common vertex, initial side, terminal side. The amount of rotation it takes to get from one to the other is going to be called the measure of that angle. It represents the amount of rotation it would take if you held this fixed, if I wanted to move the initial side to the terminal side, that amount of rotation is the measure of the angle. Now we're going to adopt a specific orientation to our angle so that if the rotation is what we call counterclockwise, right? Counterclockwise means this direction, right? Then that is going to be a positive angle. And we'll talk about why that is positive. It has to do with overlaying this on top of our rectangular coordinate system. If the rotation is clockwise, then the measure of the angle is going to be negative. It's standard practice in trigonometry for us to use Greek letters, the Greek alphabet, to represent the names of our angles as variables. So we will reserve things like x, y, and z for real number of values in our functions. But when we're talking about angles, we will typically use things like theta, alpha, and beta. And occasionally when we have used all of those up and want to refer to additional angles, we might use the Greek letter gamma, the Greek letter phi, or even omega. Um, we'll write these regularly, so I just want to show you how I'd write these by hand. Theta is a circle with a line through it. Alpha is written by starting up here and progressing through that. Beta, which looks a lot like a capital B, has got a long stem and then drawn that way. Sometimes the stem's not quite that long. Gamma looks a lot like a Y. Um, I usually have a loop in the bottom of mine, but I start up here like this. That's a gamma. Phi is a line, sorry, a circle with a vertical line through it, and omega looks like a W, but my W's are typically uh, pointy, so omega is a rounded W like that. All right, now let's talk about angles in standard position. This goes back to why we let the positive angle be counterclockwise and the negative angle be counter, uh, sorry, clockwise. An angle theta is said to be in standard position. If when we lay it onto a coordinate plane, its initial side um, is on the positive x-axis and the vertex is at the origin. All right, so I was saying that in the opposite order. I've got it typed here. If its vertex is at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system and its initial side corresponds or coincides with the uh, positive x-axis. So notice these two angles here are in standard position because we're starting from the positive x-axis and rotating to some place. This would be a positive angle. On the second example, the initial side where we start from, that is where the arrow begins, then we progress to its terminal side that requires a clockwise rotation. So that angle would be a negative angle.
It's also uh, common for us to refer to uh, a quadrant that an angle lies in. What we actually mean when we say the quadrant that the angle is in is if the angle is in standard position, meaning that its initial side is the positive x-axis, the quadrant the angle is in is what quadrant is the terminal side in. All right, so for this one, this would be a quadrant 2 angle because the, le the, the terminal side ends up in quadrant 2. This one would be a quadrant 1. Uh, this one is a quadrant 3 angle, and this one down here is a quadrant 4 angle because, again, that's where the terminal side ends up. Now let's talk about what we mean by the actual numerical measure of an angle. How big is the angle? So let's start with degrees. By convention, an angle is formed by rotating the initial side exactly once in the counterclockwise direction until it coincides with itself is said to be 360 degrees. Now, that's a convention that was just based historically on early developments in mathematics at a time when base 60 was a common use for numerical values. And the choice of 360 degrees means that that is one complete rotation. So one revolution is equal to 360 degrees. So that little symbol up there is the symbol for degrees. Okay. Now, we have some other angles that we are familiar with that we use a lot. Uh, we often talk about a right angle. Okay, that is one-fourth of the complete rotation. So if we go all the way around, that's 360. If we go one-fourth of the way around, that is one-fourth of the 360. So that would be a 90-degree angle. We can also talk about a straight angle. That is an angle that is one-half of a complete uh, revolution. And half makes it actually a straight line. You've actually formed with your two half lines one full line, but half of 360 is 180 degrees. So now let's talk about what about other measures of angles. What would 45 degrees be if we were to draw it with its initial side, again corresponding with the positive x-axis? 45 degrees is half of a right angle. So if a right angle gets me to the positive y-axis, 45 degrees would be half of that. So there is a 45 degree angle. What about negative 90? Remember negative means to move in the clockwise direction again from the positive x-axis. So negative 90 would be down to this angle here. So there is your negative 90 degrees. 225 that's a little bit trickier. You've got to think of in terms of what angles do we actually know. We know this would be 90 up to the positive y-axis. If we go another 90, that's 180. If we went another 90, we're already to 270, which is too far. So how far are we going to go? If we subtract 180 from this, we have 45 left to go. So this right here would be an additional 45 degrees. So if I started here and I went all the way around to here, that amount of rotation is 225 degrees. Now what about 405? First thing I want you to notice about 405 is it's actually more than 360. So you've got to go all the way around once at least. Okay. Um, I'm going to change colors here for this one because it's getting kind of cluttered. Um, so if you subtract 405 you actually get 45 degrees. Notice this fact right here. If I start here and I go all the way around one time, boom, that's 360 degrees. And if I keep going to right there, that is 405 degrees. So the amount of rotation is what we're measuring. We're not necessarily talking about where the end point is. We're talking about how far the rotation is. So 45 degrees has the same terminal side as 405 degrees, but they are a different amount of rotation. Same terminal side, but different sizes of angles. Okay? Now, this illustration is a very helpful tool, and you should probably keep track of this 
um, circle. And we're going to see a circle looks like this in a number of different cases as we go through and study our trigonometric functions. To begin with, let's just fill in the blanks here of what each angle would be in degrees. And let's start at zero and go positive only, realizing that at each of these terminal sides you could have multiple uh, different angles that end in that terminal side. Let's talk about the angle from zero to 360. If this is zero degrees right here, then this one up here is 90 degrees. And if we keep progressing around, this is 180 degrees. And down here we'll have 270 degrees because we each time keep adding in another 90. Now technically this gets us back to 360. Um, but I don't want to keep going all the way around because we could have you know, an infinite number of measures for each of these angles. All right, now if I cut 90 in half, that means 45 degrees right there. Okay, so what is this angle over here? That's halfway between 90 and 180. Actually, actually, it's 90 plus the 45, which gives me 135 degrees. If I take 180, we've already seen this one. This one is 225 degrees. And then over here would be the 270 plus 45, which is going to be 315 degrees. Those are all my half right angles. Okay, progressing at 45 degrees each time. Now, I, I don't know if you can tell this from looking, but these other two angles that are in the first quadrant, right, are actually taking the 90 and dividing it into three equal angles. So I divided the 90 into 2 to get 45. I divided into 3, that makes this 30 degrees and this 60 degrees. So each one of these rotations from here to here, from here to here, from here to here is 30. So keep adding 30 to your angles and you'll be able to find the rest of these. So that makes this 120 degrees, 150 degrees. All right, there should be one right here that is a hundred or sorry, 210 degrees, 240 degrees, 300 degrees, and 330 degrees. Those are the measures of all of those angles in that graph. Some angles that we measure uh, in some applications are often measured in degrees, but they can also be measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds, especially when you need much uh, more accurate measures than just degrees. Now, I could talk about something like um, 30.1526 point one five two six eight one degrees that would mean this very specific number of degrees with that decimal expansion okay that decimal number okay alternatively sometimes will people will measure things as 30 degrees um, two minutes and seven seconds oh sorry degrees minutes is a dash and then seconds is two dashes uh, two uh, apostrophes or tick marks like that. So a minute, what we mean by a minute is actually one sixtieth of a degree. There are sixty minutes in a degree. Now we think of minutes as time, but we can now take, think of them in terms of measures of angles. Okay. Also there are sixty seconds in a minute, so a second denoted by two tick marks or two apostrophes is one sixtieth of a minute or one thirty six hundredth of a degree. Now to convert from decimal degree is actually a pretty simple exercise. All you need to do is take that 50 degrees plus how many minutes are there? There are six minutes and six is one sixtieth. So you take six sixtieths plus 21 seconds which is 21 36 hundredths of a degree. You plug all that into a calculator to get what the actual decimal value is for that measure. In this case it's going to be 50.1058 degrees. Now going back the other way is a little bit trickier. Um, the first thing you want to recognize is that the number before the decimal place is actually the degrees. So we know that D is 21. We have 21 degrees. 
question is now how many minutes do we have? If we take 21 away from that, we've got 0 0.256, right? That's what's left here in the green. All right, you're going to take that, and this is a fraction of a degree. So if we multiply this times 60, we will find out how many minutes that we have. Now take 60 times 256, we get 15.36, which means then that this number right here, the 15, is the number of minutes, 15 minutes. Okay, now we take the leftover again, this 0.36, and we're going to multiply that by 60 again. Okay, so we took this to get here. We're taking this here times 60 gives me 21.6. So this number right here, the 21, oh, that's a great color for that. Let's try that again. 21, it's not much better. All right, I'm just going to circle it. This number here is the number of seconds, 21 seconds. So you take the whole number, that's your degrees, multiply the decimal by 60. The whole number you get is the minutes. Take the decimal number times 60. The whole number you get is the number of seconds. And that's how we convert back and forth.